and therefore it ceases to be Christianity. We are only narrow in as far as we're following scripture and that's, it's by scripture that we stand or fall and if people think we're narrow because we're following, following scripture, that's fine. So if the way is narrow, the path stony, has it in any manner influenced the views of Lord Mackay as Lord Chancellor, lawmaker and reformer in his legal duties? I think not. I think that it's always been recognised uh, that James Mackay is a person of very firm uh, religious convictions and most people in the Scottish legal profession have respected those convictions even if they were diametrically opposed to their own and have always, I think, been able to differentiate between James Mackay the lawyer and uh, James Mackay and his personal religious convictions. One who found the Free Presbyterian way too narrow, its discipline too keen, is the Reverend Donald Maclean of Tom and Towel, formerly a Free Presbyterian minister, now Church of Scotland. I was born into the Free Presbyterian Church and I was baptised in it and reared in it. And the church meant a lot to me and to many more. And uh, many more like myself left. I am sorry today that I didn't leave with my family years before. But there it is. I feel, in a sense, grieved now at the extreme things that have been done by the courts of the Free Presbyterian Church. Lord Mackay should never have been interfered with in the path of duty. And it was a positive Christian act to attend the funerals of colleagues whether there was a mass or not. And I have done it when I was in the Free Presbyterian Church, and I will continue to do it. And I will not have any passion to tell me what funerals to attend and under what circumstances. What do you say of those who called Lord Mackay to question for this? The very act was so unchristian. It was totally uncivilized. Are they, in your view, bigots? They're extremists. As Lord Mackay goes about his less formal duties, there are others in the church bending their minds to the possibility of a split. The Edinburgh Kirk Session has backed Lord Mackay. The Glasgow camp has been on the attack. Could the Synod meeting at Inverness in May, at which Lord Mackay's appeal will be heard, be the splitting point. I think the split is there already and the split will show itself visibly if the Edinburgh Kirk session will fail before the Supreme Court of the Church next May when the Synod meets. The Lord Mackay case you are saying will be the catalyst which will bring a complete rend in, in the fabric of the church? Well, it could be that it is the straw that will break the camel's back. There would, in fact, be two quite separate free Presbyterian churches. Call them what you will, but there'll be two separate bodies, and they are separate at the present time, and be wrong to interpret the situation in any other way. There is a move, I understand, within the church now, which is saying that things are too strict and too narrow and that there is a split within the church. Is that the case or is I it I don't no? think so. I don't think so. There may be individuals who think well, that, uh, that the church is too narrow, they are too strict. Uh, but uh, that has not manifested itself yet in any outward way, in my judgment. You're saying these are purely individuals, they're not as of a group or as... Uh, well, uh, if they are as a group, I mean... I, I don't know of them acting as a group. The only way that I would know, and I think anybody would know, uh, that, that this would be true, would be for them to act in the courts of the church. Well, so far, that has not happened. And you have no intelligence, if I may use that word, to suggest that such a move exists and is, is planning perhaps to, to do just exactly that, come well, to the courts no, of the church if, and make if, there, if there is, I prefer to wait for it to manifest itself. You have not heard of it? Well, I, well no, I haven't had any factual detail about it, no. Lord Mackay is almost certainly unhappy about his unsought role as the wedge which may split his church. He will give no interview, has publicly backed neither camp. The Reverend Alec Murray carries the dissident's banner. Is a split a real possibility? We do have that 
in us that uh, what we think is right, we're prepared to defend it and uh, to go to some considerable length in that defense. There's a somewhat dangerous situation. My own case and now this present one, it brings into this focus the attitudes that seem to be developing and uh, there's a good number of young people and not so young who are not really prepared to to take too much of uh, this authoritarian attitude. What if Lord Mackay's appeal should fail? Yes, we, we would be, we would indeed be disturbed and um, uh, we would uh, certainly, uh, if you like, fight our corner and uh, it shouldn't be a foregone conclusion that uh, a certain grouping in the church have some magic right uh, to the church and to the, the cause of the Free Presbyterian Church. Little news of the Lord Mackay affair has reached the ears of the church's Zimbabwe adherents. But the church's moderator, the Reverend Aaron Ndebele, is closely in touch, hopes to be at the Synod in May, has expressed deep concern about backsliding and a split. In Scotland, pending the hearing of Lord Mackay's appeal, his fellow parishioners keep their counsel. Can I get your reaction to Lord Mackay's suspension? No, but I'd like you to clear away and leave us to water privately. Or get to your own churches if you have one. You're disgusting lot. But as the Free Presbyterian Church endures the glare of publicity and suffers acute embarrassment as a result, factions within are claiming that Barnoldswick's chosen few may have been orchestrated. And where might the conductor of this orchestration be found? <laughs> well, uh, I don't have much doubt in my own mind. And uh, I think you'll, you'll find that in fairly high places in our church. North of the border? Well, I think so. Specifically, where and whom? Oh, I'm, I'm not prepared to, to name names and, and no names, no pact draw. <laughs> what you're saying to me is that the complaint <clears throat> may not have had its first spark in Barnoldswick, but may have surfaced perhaps in, shall we say, Glasgow, and travelled south before catching fire and coming north again. Yes, well, I would think so. A plot against the Calvinist on the Woolsack, concocted to keep the FP Church true to its narrow path, sheltered even from formal intercourse with the Catholic Church, the reaction of Lord Mackay's legal colleagues. I think most lawyers in Scotland would have expected that it would be understood that not only because of the office which he holds, but also because of the type of man he is, he would wish to show his respects at uh, the memorial services or funerals of distinguished colleagues. And I think it is surprising to many Scots lawyers that this should even have raised an eyebrow. It would be a great blessing for Scotland and for the Free Presbyterian Church if they got back to where they were many years ago. They were then a church that was small, but a church that was caring and kind. It's in this church in Inverness that the appeal of Lord Mackay will be heard at the bar of the Supreme Court of the Free Presbyterian Church. The charge against him was raised in the small Lancashire community of Barnoldswick. After reverberation throughout Whitehall and the splitting of a Calvinist community, it will be finally thrashed out. The trial of the Lord Chancellor will be at an end. That of the Free Presbyterian Church just begun.